Hey guys, just another uh, update video. Um, so, a couple of things I wanted to talk about today. Um, the throttle body issue I had uh, with the throttle sticking with this, um, after I cleaned it all and everything, uh, it came back. And um, I found that my throttle was quite light to push on. It always has been. Uh, but it started hanging and uh, it got quite dangerous. So um, it, if I let off even remotely slowly, it would just hang. So um, I had to take the... Didn't have to take the throttle body off again, but I had this issue um, and I fixed... 98% fixed it now. Um, and I'll just explain how that works. So these springs here, uh, they don't actually have anything to do with the throttle returning. I believe because this is a Risto uh, engine, this was part of the cruise control system here, which I don't have, uh, and that's for, for the cruise control return. But the actual throttle butterfly return sits inside here, and it's got three uh, lateral loading springs, I think they're called, and they're similar to this type of spring here. They're, they've got the little latch on it on each side and then it pushes it back. Uh, so I had to take all this off uh, and retension those springs. And it's, my throttle is a lot heavier, but it is returning uh, back to normal now. Um, I might have to tension one of them just a bit more uh, because at under like 1200 RPM, it's, it still might get stuck when it's hot. And I think it's because most of these, um, uh, because this engine's probably 22 to 24 years old, um, the, and it's gone through so many heat cycles with this spring, or the, the three springs that are in there, um, it, it it's, expands and loses its tension over time It gets uh, when it gets hot. So um, that's all sort of fixed now. Um, and I also uh, adjusted my throttle cable so it's got very little give in it uh, anymore. So it's just a bit loose. You'd want about 10 mil total play here. Uh, but as soon as I pull on it, it brings it forward. But uh, when the uh, when I it's still got about two or three mil of just or well, not two or three mil, maybe one mil of uh, sort of play there, just so I can ease on the throttle or give it that 1% to make it uh, pop and crackle under deceleration. Um, I've had another problem show up. Uh, it's a bit of a minor setback, but uh, my Turbo Smart boost gauge, um, the light in it has failed, so driving at night I cannot see. And because this is a sealed unit, it's non-serviceable. I can't change the uh, LED in it. Um, it's, it's got a main board on the back, it's mechanical, uh, so I've got a vacuum line running up into this, uh, but the LED light in it, uh, it has a main board sort of behind it, and it's one of those little maybe 2 mil LEDs that are soldered onto it, and you can't change it. So I'm going to have to replace um, this boost gauge, this will now be my fourth boost gauge I've put in this car that's failed. Um, Oh, sorry, third, and I'll be putting my fourth one in here, which will match this. Uh, I'll be getting the autometer liquid filled, uh, probably 30 uh, psi with 30 vacuum, or maybe 45 uh, gauge. I'm not sure which one I'm going to settle on yet, but probably the 30. That should be all I need. Um, and the good thing about autometer is they're all serviceable you can change the lights in this put either leds in it and same with the taco they're very accurate they're very good brand they're, i'm a fan of them um i do recommend them i thought the turbo smart would be good uh but it's sort of you know what i mean like it, the, the quality just isn't there uh like the autometer gear which is unfortunate because I like Turbo Smart. They're a good Australian brand. So I will be replacing that with a autometer one. And I'll probably add another cup. Uh, maybe on the top or the bottom, I'm not sure. 
uh, with an air fuel ratio gauge um, just to keep an eye on things and uh, see how that goes. Um, I got a head unit and upgraded my head unit uh, a while ago. I haven't talked about this yet, uh, but it is a pioneer. Um, I can just download me uh, anything from YouTube onto a MP3, uh, sorry, a USB, and uh, it'll just play it quite nicely. So in HD and all that. And the sound quality is a huge improvement over the Kenwood gear I had in this. Um, another thing I'd, I thought I'd show you guys is just my keyring. So, um, it's, I do have a TRD lanyard hooked up to this. Uh, well, I can hook it up to this, if you can see it. It's got the TRD on it, and, uh, yeah. Uh, just the alarm. Uh, I've got a Disc Brakes Australia torch, which is also a bottle opener. Um, and I've had this uh, for 13 years. It is a, a real carbon fiber uh, Toyota emblem that I actually bought off eBay a long time ago. So. And it's still going good. It, it's very strong, you know, multi-layer carbon. Um, you can't even bend it in the slightest, of, of, you know, and uh, I, I really like that. Real basic, but I don't like having a lot of weight on my key barrel. Um, I ended up rewiring my horns uh, because I just wasn't happy with how loud they were because I only had the one uh, wire from one of the factory horns hooked up and s split between the two and then had them earthed uh, onto the chassis. Uh, now I've run both power wires separately to each horn to make it a bit louder. And um, it it is louder, but I am not happy with these hella horns. Um, the, the factory horn in that is uh, actually quite a bit louder. So... Um, I don't know if it's just because of the age of them and it's, they've been sitting around and whatever, uh, but th they are a lot deeper tone than the factory horns. It sounds a lot better than the factory horn that comes with the Supra, but it's not as loud as I'd like it to be. So I'm thinking about putting like an air horn down the side or something a bit more uh, serious. Um, yeah, I've got a, a big sort of race event coming up this weekend at the Gold Coast in Australia so um, I'll be there for that it's for the V8 supercars and a bunch of other stuff uh, it'll be really good so uh, it's, I haven't really been doing much to this I've got that to go to and um, I'll get back into this and get the um, get the uh, cinematic video happening after that and do a few more little mods here and there um, but uh, basically I've just got to save up and get some big breaks and I can do some track days and get some good video footage for you guys and show you what's up um, yeah sort of uh, if if you guys don't follow me on Instagram just check out louder underscore supra uh, I've got some videos up there of this giving it a hard time. Um, yeah, I sort of figured out how to get rid of the uh, axle tramp issue. you just got to sort of start in second if you want to do something pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, otherwise cars run uh, pretty good. I have a... It's now got 107,000 kilometres on it, which is about six to eight or 9,000... Uh, kilometers for you imperial folks um, and uh, I'm sort of I'm gonna do a big major service on it at the 110 so oil oil filters spark plugs uh, even though the gearbox is pretty new and I've put less than 5,000 K's on it I'm just gonna change the oil on that as well uh, because it's still got the running oil in it so uh, I'll have that all sorted out. I'm also going to do my diff oil as well again uh, because I haven't done that since I bought the car uh, at 60, oh, about 70,000 kilometres. 
Um, yeah, so the uh, after that's all done, it should be quite a bit nicer and fluid to drive. Um, hopefully my diff doesn't whine as much because I have given it a hard time and drifted it around a lot and I uh, haven't changed the oil since I got it. So it's about due. Uh, you're supposed to do it every 50,000, but uh, uh, so this should be around the 40,000 mark. So I'm doing it 10,000 early. Uh, and then from then out, I might just change the gearbox and diff oil every 25 or 30,000 just to keep it on uh, keep on top of things and make sure it's always clean and I don't have any issues with that. Uh, yeah, otherwise the... Uh, the engine's run really nice. Uh, it's good on fuel. Um, yeah, so uh, other than the power steering leak, I don't really have that many issues anymore. I might, I, I might just retension these springs again, um, just a little bit more. But I don't want to make them too tight and stretch my throttle cable because it's a lot harder to push on now. It, it's like I feel like it's probably where it should have been from factory now. Uh, but my throttle cable adjustment in the engine bay is almost at the limit uh, so I might have to adjust it on the pedal again and uh, make that work because uh, I give it a lot of full throttle uh, when I drive it almost every time I drive it I'm at full throttle at some point through the gears going on an on-ramp or something so uh, yeah I'll have to uh, adjust that just to make it a bit more perfect for how I like things to be. Uh, yeah, so I'll uh, on my Instagram I'll probably put a bit of a story up on my um, um, Instagram stories of this weekend uh, at the Gold Coast with all these cars, and if I see anything cool, I'll just post it on there. So yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, have a good one. Cheers.